It's like Grand Theft Auto the movie before Grand Theft Auto the video game. This 1983 version of Scarface is a remake of the 1932 version directed by Howard Hawks. This one, however, is directed by Brian De Palma, written by Oliver Stone, and stars Al Pacino as Tony Montana, who is a Cuban refugee who makes it to Miami and pursues a life of crime in order to eventually become the biggest criminal in Miami. For the longest time, Scarface has been one of those movies that I, for some reason, have never gotten around to watch. Um, I just didn't find the time to, and I wanted to see a really good version of it. So when I got the Universal box set, Blu-ray box set, that is, Scarface was in there on Blu-ray, so I saw it, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, I don't get it. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's a good movie, and as someone who's seen the original Howard Hawks version... I can say that it is one of the few remakes out there that is better than the original, and it's certainly an entertaining movie, but I don't know, I just, I'm not in love with it as the rest of the world is. But I want to tell you about what I liked about this movie. Um, one thing, Al Pacino as Tony Montana is fantastic and over the top in this role. Even though this guy is a giant douchebag, you can see why he's going down the path he's going down and what he does in the process. I mean, it's the only thing he's good at. He's only good at murdering people and doing coke deals. And he tries to do it in order to support his family. But unfortunately, getting his family involved is just not the right uh, path, especially his sister which really doesn't end well and is an element that was kept from the original movie because in all honesty this movie is sort of remake by name only with a few elements from the Howard Hawks version in this one. He also has this policy where he will not kill kids. I mean there's a scene where he's trying to bomb a car with a target in there but the person he's trying to kill brings along his wife and kids and so he's like um he will not do it in or in the words of tony montana you think i killed two kids fuck that i don't need that shit in my hands that was an awful awful tony montana impression i i apologize um or at least i didn't think it was very good tony montana is a real scum douchebag but there are points where he is kind of likable i mean his, he has his heart in the right place, but, um, I mean, he's still, he's still really the villain. Another advantage that this movie has over the Howard Hawks version is that it's definitely a more memorable movie and a more entertaining one, because when you say the word Scarface, you're automatically going to think of this version, not the Howard Hawks version. And honestly, as good as the Howard Hawks version is, I barely remember a lot of it. Um, I remember the whole thing, the whole relationship between him and his sister uh, which is carried on in this movie, but this movie is definitely more quotable. And then there's the most famous quotable line in this movie near the end, which I am not going to say because it, it's kind of pointless. Everyone knows what it is, um, and plus you'd have to suffer through my Tony Montana impression. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll say it. Say hello to my little friend! See, told you it sucked. It's one of those quotes that even if you've never seen Scarface... Uh, but if you know a lot about movies and pop culture, you know where that quote came from. You can tell anyone where that quote came from if you haven't seen the movie. So what are the elements that keeps this movie from being great for me? Well, one thing, it is silly. I mean, for being hailed as one of the greatest gangster movies of all time, it is absolutely ridiculous in some scenes. I mean, as I mentioned, Al Pacino is good in the role, but he is definitely very over the top, and you can't help but laugh at... Um, the way he portrays Tony Montana. Um, there are some death scenes that are just ridiculous. Like um, the first guy that um, Tony Montana kills in the refugee camp. It's like, Ravenga! And the music and the guy's expression is just... You can't help but laugh. There are just some unintentionally laughable moments in this movie. Or maybe they were intentional. I don't know. I felt like the whole... Trying to make a political statement about Cubans is abandoned by the middle of the movie. I mean, this movie is written by Oliver Stone, who is a very, very political director. I mean, I mean, Brian De Palma directed this, but 
Oliver Stone will find a way to leave his mark in a movie. And I feel that uh, the political statement that he's trying to get across is just abandoned by the time Tony Montana really comes into power. And then when you get to the final shootout where that famous quote happens, it is ridiculous. I mean, it basically turns into a... Arnold Schwarzenegger sliced alone action scene where he's just shooting at everyone he can and everyone's shooting back and yet for some reason the guys cannot hit him. Okay, well some of them do but they don't kill him. I mean it's just, it is just downright silly at points. But does that make Scarface a bad movie? No, I just don't think it's a great movie. Um, and it does kind of have to deal with the fact that I've been told a lot that this is oh, one of the great movies in terms of gangster genres and in terms of great movies of the 80s. And it is definitely a product of its time. I mean, the score is very much that um, 80s kind of score, um, sort of like how today we have the Hans Zimmer Inception blah, kind of score in a lot of movies like Tron, Transformers 3. Man of Steel, so on. It's definitely a product of the time, but it's a very entertaining movie. I just don't think it's one of the great gangster movies ever made. And um, if I never saw this movie again, then I wouldn't be too disappointed. I mean, I'll watch it again, but it is just too long. I don't, I don't think this movie needs to be as long as it is. Nearly three hours. Um, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of parallels between Scarface and Wolf of Wall Street. Um, both have villainous scumbags in the lead roles that you root for. They're both rise and fall stories, and they're both almost three hours long. And I think Scarface is the definitive rise and fall story, or at least that's the one I can think of. Uh, same with Wolf of Wall Street, but Scarface even more. So I I'm just rambling on. Um, Scarface, it's a really good movie, and that's my rating. It's good, but it's not great. Um, the overhype kind of ruined um my thoughts on it being great and it can just get too silly to really prevent it from being a great movie but still a good movie and one that you should definitely see and that's my review for scartface leave a comment tell me what you thought of the movie subscribe to my channel for more stuff in the future you can check out my other channel alexg462 where i have a bunch of video blogs you can find links to my twitter facebook tumblr instagram accounts on this youtube page go check me out on letterbox.com under the name mr robinson and go check out my written reviews on geeked out nation share me with your friends and tell them about me and remember to know it before you see it. This is the real Mr. Robinson telling you that there's only one. I'll see you guys later. This is the real Mr. Robinson and screw this plane for interrupting my shot.